Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. It is uh, the end of the first week of the year, which is crazy. And here we are I'm trying to do a show live while I'm recovering from being sick. But as you can probably hear, I'm actually sounding remarkably better already. Um, but hey, that's what we're doing. So let's um, let's talk about these guys. I did a couple of videos about these. I did, did I do two or maybe just one? I did an unboxing. I think I might have done a, a preliminary talk about them. Um, and I was really excited and I'm not quite so much anymore, but l let's back up a little bit. Let me explain what this is. So what I have here are two boxes from a company called Epifan. Epifan is a company that I know for making uh, converters, switchers, converters, I guess, mostly. And I have bought their products before because after lots of research and trial and error, I had found their stuff was rock solid, really reliable, a little are on the pricier side than some of the competition, but it worked. And at the end of the day, that's what matters is that it works. So when they announced, gosh, I don't know, many months ago that they were releasing, they were developing and going to be releasing a dedicated box for live streaming, one for Facebook and one for YouTube, I got really excited because as any of you have been watching this show for any period of time are well aware, the whole process of streaming live is way harder than you want it to be. It just, it just really, really is. There's so many things that can go wrong. So many potential complications. It's just, it's just a bit of a mess. So, um, I'm just give me one second. I realize this video looks very, very dark. Well, I guess that's the way it is. Um, and so I was really excited about having this and I've used all kinds of different solutions. But anyway, so I was, I was stoked to get my hands on this. So I sent them an email probably a month or two months before release, maybe even more than that. And I said, Hey, this is what I do. I do the show. I'm streaming all the time. I would love to test your products out. And they said, great. And so once it was actually shipping, they sent me to them really excited about this, right? The whole idea is you've got one each for Facebook and one for YouTube. The fact that these are dedicated to a single platform in my mind tells me that it has to work. Right. I mean, it just has to work. It's plug and play simplicity. There's no, oh, configure 32 settings. We're trying to make a box that does 16 different things, can stream to 132 services. No, it's one box to stream to one service. And this again, to me is a very good thing. It should just work. Simplicity, right? Keep it simple. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. So I got the boxes and unboxed them here, showed you that. We'll link to that video in here. And, um, when I did the unboxing, uh, there were a couple of things I didn't understand because I hadn't ever seen them before in person. One of which was why one of them has antennas and one of them didn't. Turns out, and I don't know if I address this or not, but it turns out that the YouTube one has antennas for Wi-Fi. So you can use this over Wi-Fi. Apparently Facebook had a particular restriction to Epifan that says, we do not want people connecting over Wi-Fi to do the streaming. They have to be tethered, they have to be wired. So this only has ethernet. This one has ethernet too, but you can also go wireless. This one has to be wired. Okay, fair enough. That's just, that's their request and requirement. All right, that's cool. Um, to configure these things, you have to connect a USB mouse or keyboard, USB. You can't access it through a web portal. So you have to have a USB mouse or keyboard. Well, I luckily have one. I have a, an old Apple USB keyboard and old Apple mouse, but I hooked those up and they didn't work. So I talked to Epifan and I back and forth and I ended up having to go out and buy a, oh, great, and that broke a wireless, a Bluetooth mouse with a little Bluetooth USB adapter that I just broke from radio, like the cheapest one I could find is Radio Shack, 25 bucks or something like that. So at least I could then control the stupid thing. And I call it stupid thing with much affection. Um, so now at least I can control it, configure it, right? Okay, so I finally get the thing configured and I go live and what happens? Badly distorted audio, dropouts, horrible dropouts in the audio, kind of a, um, what was that, Max Headroom style audio thing, like just nasty audio. Okay, reset it, did something wrong, go through the whole thing, do it again. Nope, same problem. Try the YouTube one, all right, maybe it's just the Facebook, go to the YouTube one, blah, 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 same thing, same thing, same problem. What the heck, I call them, they go, oh, we don't know, it's, it, should, it seems like it should be working. Try it again, nothing's working. Then I start to see reports on the interwebs, comments on my videos, comments on other videos, other videos about it. The thing doesn't work. You do not get your audio broadcasting out of this thing. Now, maybe somebody out there has a unit that actually works, but obviously I'm talking to Epifan. You may remember in the first video, I said, I, I have no allegiances to this company. I like the, their other products, um, 
I didn't pay for these. They shipped these out to me so that I could review them on the air. And I told them, and as I told you, I'm going to be completely honest about it. I am not happy with this. It is not doing what it's supposed to do. Now, the company, in their to their credit, has been very forthcoming with me about, well, okay, now we recognize a problem. Um, we're working to fix it. And initially, it was we'll have news for you on Monday. And then, you know, by Wednesday, I'm emailing them and they're going, we'll have news for you next week. And then it was, okay, we're going to have an update out in a week. And a week went by and it'll be a couple more weeks. And so I, I think I was supposed to get an update, I don't know, mid, late December. I emailed them at the end of the year, said, what's going on? I haven't heard from you. Oh, it's much more complicated than we thought, uh, but we expect to have it out in a couple of weeks. Well, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be out of the country. So I have no idea if that update comes, if it's going to address the issues. But the point is, right now, how many hundreds of these have shipped and they don't work? So number one, if you've bought one and you're holding on to it and you've got a 30-day return period with Amazon or wherever you bought it from, personal recommendation, send it back, wait for them to fix this thing. Because if they don't ever fix it, you're toast. Um, if you haven't bought one yet, clearly don't buy one yet. I hate doing that. I hate to give a recommendation not to buy something. I love gadgets. I love tech. I love recommending, oh, you got to buy this thing because it's so cool. But I cannot recommend this right now because it just doesn't work. I'm so depressed about this. It has the idea behind it. The, the idea behind the plug and play simplicity is paramount. This should be a really beautiful, easy thing to do. One of the really nice features of both of these is that, so this has HDMI in and out. So I take my HDMI in feed. It could be from a camera and that's it, or through my entire switching system as I'm doing here and then into here. doesn't matter. It's just HDMI in. And then it's got an HDMI out to plug into a monitor where you can see what the device settings are, check the status of your, the health of your stream and that sort of thing, but also see the comments. This was one of the most exciting parts of it. I, second most exciting after the simplicity of just plug and play, <coughs> excuse me, that I could see the comments, not through a bizarre web browser interface that kind of half sometimes works, half sometimes doesn't, but just this native screen that shows the comments. I was super stoked about that. I think that works, but I wouldn't know because I can't be on air for at all because, you know, you can't hear me. So anyway, I just needed to update you on this because it's been a while since I've talked about it because I hadn't heard anything. I finally reached out to them again. They said it's going to be a few more weeks and that's going to come next week, I guess, or maybe the week after. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to be here. So when I come back from my trip at the end of January, I will hopefully uh, they will have an update. Hopefully I will be able to update this and hopefully it will work. And hopefully at that point, I'll be able to give you a buy recommendation. I'll be able to say this is the box to buy to go live on YouTube or Facebook with utter ease and simplicity. But right now I can't, <clears throat> unfortunately. Um, one more thing I'll tell you, they did tell me, you know, take it with a grain of salt uh, for Facebook. As you probably know by now, you can schedule a live stream on Facebook. This box, as it is now, will only work with the go live now function. So basically, I plug this thing and I hit go and I'm on the air. I can't schedule a stream and use this device. Uh, and in, in all fairness, you can't do that with the Video Pro that I'm using right now using their native Facebook presets. I have to go into manual mode. I have to, every time I schedule a show, I get a very long encrypted key, which I have to copy and paste into the VDU and so on to make that work, um, which is fine. But that's that's how that works. This you cannot, there's no way to do it. But they said that is something they're addressing in this fix as well. So hopefully next time I talk about this, I will have all kinds of good news. But for now, I unfortunately do not. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say about this thing. Um, yeah, it's the weekend. I've got a couple other things queued up for next week. And I guess that's it. All right, guys, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.